anything else than online student desk to see an example with these repeated eigenvalues. So we'll try to be efficient while also being Linear. So that's so that A be this somewhat artificial looking matrix, and we're trying to solve X prime equals AX, and we need the eigenvalues of A and eigenvectors as well, but I'll we'll start with eigenvalues, and because I don't really want to try to find the determinant of, I mean, I guess it's got a lot of zeros, the determinant wouldn't be too bad, but I'd still rather not. And then I also don't want to find the roots of a fourth degree polynomial. So let's start this out. So here's our characteristic polynomial, and we can see that its roots are two and negative one. Let me write this down. Is it lambda minus two or two minus lambda, lambda minus two. You will be there. Lambda plus one. So our eigenvalues are two and negative one. And the number of solutions we need from an eigenvalue is the power that the factor is being raised to. So from negative one, we should get one solution from two, we should get three solutions. Uh, when we have a one up here, there is never going to be any issues. We'll just um, find the eigenvector of negative one and use that to create a solution. And Again, we can do this. Lambda plus one I times V equals zero. So that's going to put a one in the diagonals, but otherwise is going to leave the matrix alone. So there's a lambda plus. 
declaring it. A. A minus lambda i, but lambda is ne negative one. So A minus negative i is A plus i. And to solve this, we're going to take this matrix and we're going to take the zero vector, and we're going to, we say we augment the matrix. And then we can go to our calculator and solve this using our R, 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 E, F algorithm. So the matrix we're looking at is four rows, five columns. It's got one, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero. Zero, one, one, eight, negative four, negative six, positive six. And then the last column comes from the zero vector, it's all zeros. Without math, okay, so this is what we get. Let me just. Drop this down. So we wind up with x1 plus 8x4 equals 0, x2 minus 12x4 equals 0, x3 plus 6x4 equals 0. If we might be easier to bring the x4s over here. Um, any values of x1, x2, x3, x4 that satisfy this are a solution. Um, one, negative six, 12, negative eight. There are other solutions too. But once we found the eigenvector, we use it and the eigenvalue. to find the one solution we're looking for. So no problem from negative one. Um, let's go through the start of two a little faster maybe. 
we want two solutions from, is it positive two, positive two. We want to have three solutions to this. And I mean, we're going to get infinitely many solutions. What I mean is that we want three linear, the independent eigenvectors. If we have that, we create three linear, the um, independent solutions. So negative two, zero, zero, eight. And then we've got this zero vector stuck on at the end. One, negative two, zero, negative four, this zero vector at the end, zero, one, negative two, negative six, this zero vector at the end, zero, zero, one, five minus two is three, this zero vector at the end. And said we should go faster, but that's just going to happen naturally because most of this matrix is already entered. We just need to modify it a bit. Now we've got negative twos down the diagonal. And uh, let's see, the five became a three. And once again, we get if um, we should always, when we're doing this, we should always end up with at least one row of zero. If we haven't, something's gone wrong. So it's always reassuring to see this. Again, let me... Stop this down. And uh, this uh, the second row is interesting, by the way. Instead of X2 being a multiple of something, we just get X2 equals zero. So let's uh, go back to the whiteboard. We get X1 equals four, X4, X2 equals zero. If we want, we can think of that as zero times X4. X3 equals negative three X4. And then we don't have an equation for X4. But if we want, we can write in a dummy equation that X4 equals itself. And now every value of X4 gives us an eigenvector. So the reason we're sort of going to run into issues here is we need three of any or the independent eigenvectors and we're only getting one. And I don't know if that's obvious, but it's because all of these solutions 
are a constant or are x4 times the vector 4, 0, negative 3, 1. So any two eigenvectors are a scalar multiple of this vector. So any two eigenvectors are scalar multiples of each other. So we get a solution for zero, negative three, one times e to the was negative two, if my memory positive two. So we get a solution, but that's the only solution we can get from the eigenvector. So we have that solution from an eigenvector and this solution from an eigenvector, and those are two solutions. And what we need is um, four solutions. So the issue I mean the issue is with this eigenvalue. Um, we have fewer than the three solutions we needed it to give us. So we'll start in with the generalized eigenvectors. And once we've found an eigenvector, we can look for the generalized eigenvectors. And the generalized eigenvectors are going to be found the same way the eigenvectors are found except that instead of setting it equal to zero, we'll set it equal to the eigenvector. So to find a generalized eigenvector, we're looking at a minus two i times v2 equals v1. So go to our calculator. Our matrix is still mostly what we want it to be. But now, instead of having zeros over here, we have V1. So let me remind myself real quick for zero negative three, one. And now we perform this algorithm on, the, on this so-called augmented matrix. Let me copy this down so that I'm not constantly having to flip between these. So this time we get, let's see, 
V1 minus 4, V4 equals negative 2. Uh, V2 equals negative 1. V3 plus 3 V4 equals 1. And then again, the useless statement that zero equals zero. So, see, V2 equals negative one. Um, V4 could equal whatever. Maybe V4 equals 1. If V4 equals 1, then V3 is negative 2. And if V4 is 1, then V1 is positive 2. Does this look right to everyone? So, once we have a generalized eigenvector, we can use that to create a, another uh, solution. In particular, we can create the solution that is the eigenvector, um, Four zero negative three one times T plus the generalized eigenvector two negative one negative two one. all times E raised to the eigenvalue, which is two times T. So the generalized eigenvector gives us a third solution. And this, this form of the solution comes from the notes. There's like these solutions are all going to be polynomials and in the notes, there's the specific form of the polynomial. But we're still not done because we need, um, we need four solutions and we have three solutions. Uh, so we're going to use now, this generalized eigenvector to find a new generalized eigenvector. We create this chain. So A minus 2i times V3 equals Uh, this generalized eigenvector, two, negative one, negative two, one. Two, negative one, negative two, one. So the only thing that's changing now, this isn't as tedious as it could be because it's only the last column that's changing to negative one, negative two, one. And we get out and we perform 
this reduced row echelon form algorithm on A, and we get a new matrix. Said it wasn't as tedious as it could be. This one problem is now entering its 30th minute. I'm certainly not saying it doesn't have its tedious elements. Let me copy this. Down. And now we can get another generalized eigenvector. What we get from this is B1 equals a uh, negative one plus four V4, V2 equals zero, V3 equals one minus three, V4, and then the a useless statement, or at least the vacuous trivial statement that zero equals zero. And see, V2 is zero. Let's see. One thing we don't want is. We don't want this generalized eigenvector to be an eigenvector. And that's, that shouldn't really be an issue. Um, V2 is zero, V4, will that be one? V3 is negative two, V1 is three. I will just briefly check. Three zero negative two one. That's not a constant multiple of any of the stuff we already have. And now that we have a third um, generalized eigenvector, it's going to be. And here again, I'm reading off the, the frame in, on, in my online notes. It's section 5.5, multiple eigenvalue solutions, frame five out of nine. Um, one half times the eigenvector, which was four, zero, negative three, one. times t squared plus, and then the first generalized eigenvector times t, the first generalized eigenvector we found was two negative one, two one. times t plus, then our third generalized eigenvector, three zero negative two one. Then e to the eigenvalue times t. And we should now be done. We needed four solutions. I've been circling them in pink. So there's a solution. 
There's a solution. There's a solution. There's a solution. We have the four solutions we need. And I'm not actually, what would happen if we didn't recognize that and kept going? I'm actually not sure. Let's find out what happens if we look for another generalized eigenvector. Three is zero, negative two, one. So what would have happened if we hadn't recognized um, that we were done and had tried to find another generalized eigenvector is that we would have gotten um, equations without solutions. You see this last row has turned from zero, 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 zero to zero, 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 one. So this last row is now telling us that zero was one, which of course, there is no way to make that be a true statement. So that's, um, that's the idea behind this. I, since I, I had to confess my ignorance last Thursday, I looked it up. Suppose we have a defective eigenvalue lambda, sometimes also called a deficient eigenvalue, by the way. And suppose we want seven solutions. And maybe... Maybe we have three eigenvectors giving us three solutions. And I had to admit I wasn't sure. Can you just pick an eigenvector and just always create the chain like we just did? And the answer is no. What might happen is that this first eigenvector doesn't have any generalized eigenvectors. The second eigenvector has one generalized eigenvector and you can't go any further. You get zero equals one if you try to go further. And this last eigenvector has more. generalized eigenvectors. So you get one solution from this eigenvector, two solutions from this, and the generalized eigenvector, four solutions from this, and the generalized eigenvectors. So there's no guarantee that you can just pick an eigenvector and only work with it. If you have multiple linearly independent eigenvectors, you might have to work with all of them.